Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Kim Armstead, Public Information Officer with the Oakland Police Department. Today, Oakland Police Chief LaRon Armstrong will be providing an update regarding the homicide of Kevin Nishida. Chief Armstrong is joined by Oakland Police Homicide Lieutenant Frederick Shavies, Acting United States Marshal Mark Kolk, and Assistant District Attorney Michael Nieto. We will hold all questions until everyone has had a chance to speak. I'll now turn it over to Chief Armstrong. Thank you, and thank you for being here today. Uh, you know, for so many months, we've been saying that we wanted uh, to make some headway on the Kevin Nishida homicide. Um, and so uh, we are grateful today to be able to come before you, and I believe bring some positive uh, messages to the community, as well as the family and friends of uh, Kevin Nishida. Uh, first, I'd like to start off by saying, uh, my true appreciation for all of the Oakland residents that have provided information that helped us uh, solve this in this case and, and bring people to justice, but also those from the city of San Francisco as well, who also brought forth information that was very instrumental uh, in this case. Understanding that the individuals responsible for this crime, uh, we wanted to make sure that we did a thorough investigation and make sure that we examine all the evidence so that we could identify those responsible. And so today, I want to announce uh, the two arrests that have been made in the Kevin Nishida homicide. Uh, Shadaya Mitchell was taken into custody by the U.S. Marshals in the city of San Francisco on Wednesday, and he has been charged by the district attorney's office with homicide. The second suspect, an individual named Herschel Hale, was taken into custody on February 9th. He was in custody uh, in the city and county of San Francisco jail, where we went to uh, add the additional charge of homicide charged by the Alameda County District Attorney's Office as well. So he will remain in custody with that charge. Today, we also uh, have uh, information and need the public to help with, uh, with locating the third suspect who was not in custody, Laron Gilbert. Uh, this individual has been charged with homicide. The U.S. Marshal and others are helping us try to locate this individual, but we also are seeking the public's help in locating this individual who's responsible for this homicide as well. Uh, I, I just want to thank the U.S. Marshal for their help and their diligence uh, in following up and apprehending uh, this dangerous individual. I also want to thank the district attorney for their due diligence uh, in charge in this case. And again, uh, tremendous thanks to our community for stepping up. When I asked for help and asked for information to help us solve this case, you did not let uh, to the arrest of these individuals. Uh, we look forward to coming back in the future uh, with an update when we arrest Mr. Gilbert. With that, I'll take any questions that you might have. And uh, Lieutenant Shavies, our homicide commander is here as well. Uh, Chief, sorry, one quick second. We're gonna turn it over to the US Marshals first. I'm, I apologize. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Mark Holk, I'm the acting U.S. Marshal for the Northern District of California. As Chief Armstrong mentioned uh, yesterday, U.S. Marshal Service Pacific Southwest Regional Fugitive Task Force, with the assistance of the San Francisco Police Department, arrested Shadiah Mitchell, who was wanted in connection uh, with the death of Kevin Nishida in November of 2021. Uh, the task force is comprised of federal, state, and local law enforcement officers who combine their resources and work daily to apprehend violent fugitives from justice uh, like Mitchell. We're uh, very grateful for the strong working relationship with a number of our partners, especially the Oakland Police Department and the San Francisco Police Department. Uh, we're grateful to have been able to assist the Oakland Police Department in a case that hit so close to the public, the media, and the law enforcement community. Uh, and we're also grateful for the assistance of the San Francisco Police Department in making the arrest of Mitchell. All right, we're gonna turn it over to Mr. Nieto with the DA's office. Good, af good afternoon, everyone. My name is Michael Nieto, and I'm an assistant district attorney with the Alameda County District Attorney's Office. First and foremost, on behalf of District Attorney Nancy O'Malley and the Alameda County District Attorney's Office, I want to send our deepest condolences to the family and the loved ones of Kevin Nishida, his former police department colleagues and his colleagues in the media business, as well as in the security business. I want them to know, and I want all the victims and witnesses to know, including Mr. Tuck, that our Victim Witness Assistance Division will be standing by to assist them as the case moves forward. Our office is formally announcing that charges have been filed in this senseless murder of retired police officer and security guard, Mr. Nishida. All three defendants, Laron Gilbert, Herschel Hale, and Shadahaya Mitchell have been charged with murder, 
attempted second degree robbery and assault with a semi-automatic firearm. All three defendants have also been charged with a special allegation of felony murder with defendant Shadahaya Mitchell as the actual killer. Defendant Mitchell was also charged with being a felon, a convicted felon in possession of a firearm. Charging documents, including the complaint and probable cause declarations will be made available to the media upon request. If you have such a request, please email damedia at acgov.org. The arraignment for defendant Shadahaya Mitchell is set for tomorrow, Friday, March 18th in department 702 at the East County Hall of Justice in Dublin, starting at 8.30 a.m. Defendant Hale's arraignment has not yet been scheduled as Chief Armstrong referred to, he is in custody in San Francisco. On behalf of District Attorney Nancy O'Malley and the Alameda County District Attorney's Office, I also want to thank our law enforcement partners, all of them, but specifically the Oakland Police Department and the U.S. Marshal Service for all of their hard work on this case. Because this is now a pending case, the Alameda County District Attorney's Office will not be making any further comments about the facts of the case. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Now we're going to go to questions. I ask that you use the raise your hand feature to ask your question, or you can type them in the chat. We will direct the questions as needed. Uh, I see Zinni, your hand is up. You have the first question, sir. Uh, thank you very much and good afternoon. Regarding the suspect at large, when was he last seen? Or spotted? Zinni, we won't go into specific uh, specifics of where he's seen, because obviously we use things to follow up uh, to see if that person does return to those locations. But I will say that uh, the individual was in custody uh, a couple of months ago, uh, was released from custody. At that time, he was not charged with this homicide. He was in custody for unrelated charges. Uh, and we know that, uh, but the investigation was not at a point uh, for charging at that point. And so uh, we have been tracking his whereabouts and we are continuing to pursue all leads that we get. But again, we have not located them yet. Well, thank you. And just a quick follow up. Uh, if someone does spot him, what do you want them to do? It's an obvious question, but I just want it out there for consumption. Yes, they should call uh, our emergency number. We consider this person to be dangerous. Um, and so we would like them to call 911. Uh, let us know that it's the person that uh, the Oakland Police Department is looking for, and we'll send officers. Yeah, thank you. Okay, the next question goes to Jacob. Jacob Rogers. Yeah, thank you so much for the time. Um, wanted to check, uh, I was curious for a little more details about, you know, how you were able to, to make these arrests. You know, it had been a, so about almost four months or so since uh, the shooting happened. I mean, um, were, was this a result of any info that came in through the reward? Will that reward be paid out? How many tips uh, did you receive in this? And, and really, I'm kind of curious for a few more details about um, some of the challenges you faced as well as how you were able to, uh, to make these arrests. I'll say I won't get into specifics like uh, Mr. Nieto said, this is an ongoing case that we don't want to talk about things that may have uh, that may come up in some type of future proceeding. I'll just say that we did get tips that helped us uh, identify the vehicle. We did get tips uh, on possible locations of the suspects. We have been sharing that information with our law enforcement partners, including the U.S. Marshal, um, and so as well as our teams. But also, I want to give tremendous credit to our homicide detectives who took on this case that the relentless follow-up that they did, uh, the around the clock following up on all of that information that the public was bringing forward. I think that truly is what led uh, to, this, to, to this announcement today. And to the Nishida family who I've spoken to his wife, you know, I committed that we would do everything we could to identify the people responsible. And so it is rewarding today to be able to come before her and the family and friends of Mr. Nishida and say that we have uh, uh, identified those individuals uh, and they are being brought to justice. All right, Chief, I'm going to the chat here. This question is from KCBS. The Chief mentioned thanks to the community. Can he please expand on how that worked out? Yeah, we, we, uh, we provided photos early on through the media of the vehicle that we believe was involved in this crime. Uh, community members immediately started to share with us uh, who, that who that vehicle belonged to. 
uh, the individuals that may have been associated with that vehicle, those were, that was tremendously helpful in this investigation. Uh, where that vehicle was last seen, uh, when the vehicle was parked in certain areas, that information was shared with law enforcement and we were able to follow up on those leads. So I think uh, again, an incredible amount of appreciation to community because uh, it was, that vehicle was outside the city of Oakland and even in other cities, uh, community members brought forth information so we would know where to go look for that vehicle at. And that was a tremendous help. Uh, the next question is for the DA's office. Henry, I'll actually let you answer, ask that question. We'll get to your other question later, but Henry, go ahead. Yeah, if you guys can hear me, uh, uh, Assistant DA Nieto confirming no special search alleged. Is it because any robbery was not completed that it's an attempt robbery only? Uh, not for that reason, but you're correct that no special search was alleged, but not for that legal reason, different legal reasons. Okay. Uh, all right. Thank you. Um, I see a question in here from Corey again, KCBS. Um, Corey, go ahead. Okay, I'll ask the question. Uh, question says, the surveillance cameras assist in identifying the suspects? I won't get into specific surveillance cameras or what surveillance evidence we, we have, but I will say that we, camera evidence, video evidence was very, uh, was instrumental in identifying the vehicle and the, and the individuals associated with the vehicle. So we, you know, I think that type of information was key in helping us identify these individuals as well as the car. Uh, the make and model of the vehicle, all of that was helpful. Thank you, Chief Jacob. I'll come to you in a second. Uh, does anyone else have any additional questions about this current case that we're talking about? Please, again, use your raise your hand feature and we will call on you, or you can also use the chat. Jacob, go ahead. Yeah, thanks. I, I just wanted to, to be sure, um, back in December, there were a couple rests, I believe, um, uh, somewhat connected to this case, uh, you mentioned that uh, Gilbert had been arrested or had been in custody as a couple of months ago, um, not in relation to this case. Was Gilbert, you know, detained back in December um, as, a, as part of those initial arrests? And can you provide more details about that, please? Gilbert's arrest uh, several months ago was not related to this particular case. Uh, we, you know, obviously were. Uh, looking at following up on leads uh, that connected Gilbert, but we weren't at a point where we were able uh, to bring forth that case at that time to the district attorney's office for charging. Uh, I, I will say uh, that his, you know, obviously while he was in custody, he, had, he, you know, at some point was released. And at that point, the case was still not charged. And so I think it was just a timing thing, uh, but I really do uh, believe that it, it won't be long before we apprehend him. Just a, a quick follow-up question. Can you provide details on what he was in uh, in custody for back then and where that was? Lieutenant Shavies is here. I, I, I won't, I can't recall the exact charge that he was originally in custody for, or, or uh, but I can say that it was, I believe it was uh, in another county jail, but I'll let Lieutenant Shavies speak to that. Thank you, Chief. So yes, Mr. Gilbert had been arrested on a, <clears throat> an unrelated parole violation charge. Thank you, Lieutenant. Uh, going back to the questions here, we have a question that says, any priors on these suspects, were they known to OPD? I'll let Lieutenant Shavey speak to their history. Thank you. So they're, they're uh, each of the each of the individuals uh, does have prior uh, felony convictions. Um, I didn't. I, I can't necessarily recall the second part, half. Was it were they known to the Oakland Police Department? Uh, and yes, uh, at least one of the individuals was known to the police department, but all three were known to local law enforcement agencies. Thank you, sir. Again, one more opportunity to ask questions about this case. If not, we have one additional question from Henry Lee. I will go on with that question. Uh, Henry, I'll let you ask that. Yeah, hi, Chief or uh, Lieutenant Shays. Just any brief thoughts on that unfortunate tragedy, 76th and Rudsdale, uh, two innocent lives lost in that crash. Yeah, I just wanna say, you know, a tragic situation last night, uh, unfortunately last night, that 
uh, 845 p.m. in the 1300 block of 76th Avenue. Uh, officers attempted to stop a felony warrant suspect. Uh, the suspect pulled over in his vehicle. Uh, unfortunately, when the officers approached the vehicle, uh, the subject in the, in the vehicle took off and fled from the officers. Uh, shortly after fleeing, his vehicle collided with an innocent uh, car vehicle uh, with three uh, occupants inside that vehicle. Unfortunately, uh, two of the occupants in that vehicle were fatally injured. Um, a, a really senseless crime that should not have happened. Uh, we uh, we uh, apprehended the suspect and that suspect is in custody now and prepared for charging related to the deaths of those two, uh, two uninvolved people. Thank you, Chief. Going back to the chat, uh, I think this is a follow-up question to the Nishida case. The question is, are, are the individuals known gang members again with the Nishida case? Lieutenant Shavey, is it? So yes, we do believe that the individuals uh, are associated with the uh, criminal street gang out of the city of San Francisco. Thank you, sir. And then one last question, I believe. Uh, oh, I see hands coming up again. Jacob, back to you again. Please be concise. Yeah. Uh, just real quick, uh, you mentioned that you had spoken to the Nishida family. Um, can you describe a little bit about um, that conversation uh, since this arrest, it sounds like? Well, this, you know, obviously this has, you know, been a very difficult time for the Nishida family. Obviously, he is loved by his family, by his co-workers, uh, and by those that knew him. Um, and so, you know, we have, you know, done everything we can to, to maintain communication uh, with the family, uh, give it, provided them updates when we could, and, uh, and, and we have spoken to them prior uh, to today's press conference. And so, uh, obviously, you know, uh, nothing brings back your loved one. But but this is something that that people can feel some sense of justice as a result of this arrest. And so we continue uh, to wrap our arms around his family and their law enforcement family continues to support them as well. And lastly, just I, I want to be sure I understood a previous question. So the, the two people who were arrested back in December in relation to this case, are any of those two people the same people arrested today? Jacob, uh, you you kind of cut out, so I was. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Lieutenant. Yes, the two individuals that were arrested back in December uh, are related to this case. Thank you. Uh, the next question, Kenny Choi is asking. Kenny, go ahead, please. Hello, is that for me? Yeah. No, yeah, I just unmuted. I just Hold unmuted. On. My question was. Of the three suspects, which one is the owner of that white Acura that you sent a photo out of? I'm not sure if we're answering that. The question was, are we saying who the owner of the Acura is? Uh, we believe that one of the individuals that, that, that has been charged uh, was the owner, at least the, uh, the the possessor of the Acura that was used in the crime. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mike, I see your hand up, or excuse me, you have a question here in the chat. Um, yes, I do. I'm wondering if the suspects were, any of the suspects were involved in any previous uh, media robberies. Okay, by the signs, I think we're still investigating that, so we will not release that information at this time. Zinni, I see you back again, my friend Zinni. Yes, sir. Um, just out of curiosity, you mentioned uh, that there was a San Francisco gang involved. Do you have a name? And also as a follow-up, are you monitoring YouTube activity regarding what gang members post? Because I have a system where if I just like a YouTube video, it becomes a blog post under, and a, under Oakland Gang Wars. There's a ton of information. I don't get follow-up from the rest of the media which I'm begging you all to do because it could help us, you know, help the police better to understand exactly what's going on and who's doing what. Thank you. I'll say, Zinni, we don't give out gang names because we try not to bring any uh, media attention to these gangs. Uh, but I will tell you that we do track the gangs both on social media and uh, through YouTube and other, uh, and other platforms. 
well then let's partner you know we, we are at this doing this stuff we have to partner together okay thank you Zane. cornell i see your hand cornell hey uh my question was uh the same i think that was just asked any other media robberies uh, by these individuals um uh, local tv crews cameras etc not that we've connected at this point we'll continue our investigation though uh to see if any of them are are, are connected uh but I, I think you know at this point we haven't connected them okay thank you all right last question kenny around us out here chief armstrong was anyone else besides the three suspects identified and named today arrested in connection with this case? No, we believe that these are the three individuals that are responsible for this heinous crime. Thank you very much. Chief, I'm going to let you uh, close this out here, sir. Well, I mean, this obviously, uh, the homicide of uh, this touches everybody. Uh, the idea, you know, that somebody from that has a connection to the law enforcement community, uh, to the media community, as well as to the Bay Area community as a whole, Mr. Nishida's death was something that I think affected a lot of people. Um, and just like all homicide investigations, uh, the Oakland Police Department will relentlessly follow up to identify those that are responsible. And I've said over and over again that we need the community's help. And I truly am appreciative that the community stepped up. I'm also appreciative of the partnership with the U.S. Marshal, the San Francisco Police Department, and the district attorneys following up in charge in this case. So uh, everybody came together to bring uh, what we believe is the right outcome um, in this tragic and unfortunate death. So thank you all, and, and, and thank you for being here today.